K1 and K2, we say again, is the wave number, right? It's a wave number. But what we can also say is that this solution and this solution represents waves that move from left to right. Right, we have already started with the we have started with the, the point that the particle starts on the left hand side. So these two solutions with this are uh, i, so it's not negative i, it's i r k x, represent solutions of the wave moving from the left to the right. Uh, to be more specific, is the wave of the particle or the wave-like behavior of the particle moving from left to right. Conversely, these two solutions e to the minus i k one and um, i minus i k two x represent solution of the particle moving from the right to the left. Right, moving from the right to the left. So as you can see, if I would draw it down here, um, the wave that's moving from in this direction, from the left to the right, is given by a e i k one x, and moving from right to left is given by b e i k one x. Right, and then because we can also notice that these are coefficients of the the functions e to the i k x, we can actually say that this term, okay, which is the the magnitude of a squared. It's called something, and that is called the intensity of the wave. Intensity of the wave. Well, actually, it's the respective wave. So you need to be careful on the coefficients multiplied by by whatever function it is over here. So e to the i k one x represents the wave in the region of x less than zero moving from left to right. A the magnitude of a squared is basically the intensity of this wave. Right? Hey, you can see that, and and you know similarly. Um, the magnitude of, of B um, squared is the intensity of the wave moving from right to left in this region. And in this region, what we have is that um, this one, so C, C uh, E to the I K 2 X represents the wave moving from left to right, and from right to left, it's D E to the minus, sorry, minus, uh, no, D E minus I K 2 X. So this is a plus. Uh, minus again moving from right to left. Now, we also talked about eliminating these solutions. See, the, when we get the solutions to the time independent Schrodinger equation, we can make some uh, conclusive arguments to eliminate some of the solutions. That is based on the context, and our context for today is the potential step. Now, what can we see? Classical mechanic picture, I did say that the particle gets totally transmitted, right? But quantum, mechanic, quantum mechanically, if the particle starts in this uh, point, in this left-hand side, we are not sure yet whether all the particles get transmitted over. There is this small case because you know motion or certainly the, the dynamics is governed by the time independent showing the equation that some of the waves might get reflected back towards the left. And because of that, we don't know, we don't know for sure, we must retain these two solutions. So we must retain these two solutions first, one of them of which represents the particle that's being reflected from right to left. However, for this region when x is greater than zero, what can I conclude? I can conclude that if the particle starts on this side, I can eliminate one of the solutions. And if you have a perceptify, we can eliminate this solution over here. Okay? We can eliminate that one. Why? Because, as you can see, the particle starts from here. As it reaches the potential step, something funny happens. Yes, it might get reflected. It might get reflected, okay, regulated by the time independent of the equation. But some might get transmitted. Yes, some might also get transmitted. However, we can conclusively, conclusively say that none of the particles really gets reflected in this direction. See, there's, there's no sense for a wave to be in this region that travels in this direction when we say that the particle actually starts from this left-hand side. There is, no, there is no meaning for this solution to exist given the context of our problem. And that is the particle starting from the left-hand side. So as you can see, I really can eliminate this solution over here, right? So that is all that is to it. So find the, the time independent showing the equation, we'll find out that this wave, okay, or this wave of the particle has no business being here, eliminate that solution, simplify our analysis. Now, we want to move swiftly along to what is this funny thing that happens. And for that, we need to employ these things called the reflection coefficient and the transmission coefficient. Now for today, we have to take those definitions defined as it is. One of my appendices would explain how did I get that, right? But let's just take it once it is because actually it does make some sense on what these coefficients are. Now, the reflection coefficient is given by this capital R is equal to the magnitude of this thing called the, the J subscript reflected and J subscript reflected. Now J is actually called the probability current density. And if we have a J subscript reflected, it's what we know as the reflected current density. J incident is the incident current density. And as you can see from here, this ratio is easily interpreted as the ratio of the reflected beam of particles to the 
incident beam of particles. There's a certain um, amount of particles, a beam of particles that's going inside here. A certain amount of them will get reflected. That is given by the um, this, okay, the J, the reflected current density and divided by the incident current density. Um, likewise, for the transmission coefficient, which is given by capital T, is equal to the magnitude of the transmitted current density, which is basically the beam that gets transmitted over, um, over the incident current density, okay, the beam that is incident towards the potential stack, which is again makes sense, you know, as, as you can see that, you know, it's really taking the reflected current density and the transmitted current density over the, the beam of our particles that was incident to the potential stack. Now, in electrodynamics, we have this thing called the conservation of charge, okay, in classical mechanics, we got this thing called the conservation of mass. In quantum mechanics, we have this thing called the conservation of prob probability. Now, I say again that it comes from this indeterministic nature of the quantum world. So as you can see, from the conservation of probability, we actually got this certain equation over here. The time partial derivative of the probability density plus the del operator on the probability current density is equal to zero. Now the reason I want to write this is because we have actually, there is, there is actually a definition for J, right, which we'll, we'll see very soon. So where do we stand? This is where we stand right now. We got a certain problem. We've already eliminated the solutions of, of the various uh, things which, which do not make sense. And then we want to investigate the quantum mechanic behavior. We need to really calculate these two reflection coefficient and the transmitter coefficient. Now we can also kind of anticipate that this probability current density relates to the solution over here. And this solution over here kind of is dependent on the intensities ABC. So really, it's still not that easy yet. It's still not a, too much of a clear picture on what is this funny thing that happens. But once we do that, we can explain the behavior at the potential step. Let's also say that these coefficients, how are we going to manipulate them is using the continuity conditions, which we say, you know, in the previous few lessons, the continuity conditions. And that is, side one and side two, they're equal when they're evaluated that x equals to zero, as well as their uh, coordinate derivatives. Right? Now, I will just quickly say that they're not boundary conditions because they're not uh, really uh, below the potential. They're continuity equations. So we will see uh, where we can take, what we can take from here. Let's see what are these reflection and coefficients and what they tell us. Right? I'll stick on for the, for the continuation of this lesson.